Hi guys, welcome to the video on spectroscopy. Um, in this series of videos, we're going to talk about what spectroscopy is and about the different types of spectroscopy. Um, and spectroscopy is just a way to use light um, and other sources of electromagnetic radiation to see very small things. Um, in this video, we're going to focus on NMR or nuclear magnetic resonance. So just some applications of spectroscopy. Um, so this is a table that shows the different types of spectroscopy um, and why you would choose it. So in AP chemistry, you need to know about um, NMR along with PES, UV vis, and IR. Um, we will talk about each one of these in more detail um, in their respective videos, but this is definitely a table that would be worth copying down. Um, nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR, is also very useful, uh, and you will use it a lot more when you get to organic chemistry. So nuclear magnetic resonance, or NMR, um, use, utilizes radio waves. Um, so this is going to be a quick introduction to NMR, uh, but keep in mind that you'll go into much more detail when you reach college um, organic chemistry. So um, NMR uses radio waves. It's a very low frequency, usually 10 to the 4th or 10 to the 8th hertz. Um, so these are very low frequency, and because it's low frequency, it's also lower energy levels. Um, however, the electrons that are inside the atom or inside the molecule need more energy than this to move around, so NMR actually has no impact or no effect on the electrons that are in a molecule. It also has no impact on the nucleus of an atom or on bonds in a molecule. Um, so if NMR is not moving the electrons and it's not impacting the bonds, then what is it doing? Well, um, NMR actually causes a change in nuclear spin. So the radio waves that are being used um, to, to shoot at the atoms or the molecules cause a change in nuclear spin. Um, anytime we connect spin and charge, we create what's called a magnetic moment. So if you remember, the electron can have two different spins. You can have it spinning up, which is the plus one-half quantum number, or down, which is the minus one-half quantum number. Um, when we apply a magnetic field by bringing a magnet close to the sample, for example, the nuclei um, and the electrons either line up with or against the magnetic field. And this is the important part of the NMR. So what this means is we can use NMR to detect the types of bonds in organic molecules. So this is why you'll study it much, much more in organic chemistry. You'll go much more into detail in reading the NMR spectrum. Um, we're just doing a brief overview for now. And so we can detect the types of bonds um, in organic molecules. Um, and the internal magnetic fields within a molecule differ at each chemically distinct site. So what it means to be chemically distinct is that the presence of electrons is going to alter the environment, which will then alter the magnetic environment of the nuclei. So the more electrons you have, the more your um, electronic environment is altered. Um, and what this does is this reveals the structure of a molecule by showing the bonding patterns. So this actually allows us to see um, the molecular structure um, broken down. So we could look at methyl groups, which are CH3, or ethyl groups, which are CH2. Uh, maybe we have an, an alcohol, we have an OH group somewhere. Um, and NMR is also used to produce visual images of either the brain or other soft tissue, um, which if you've ever had an MRI, um, so magnetic resonance imaging, if you've ever had an MRI, that is actually using NMR. So an example, um, this is looking at the ethanol H1 NMR. And so this H1 um, just is a specific type of NMR. Um, when you see it say H1, we're using a certain frequency to target the hydrogen atoms. So what we're actually looking at in this NMR is just the hydrogen atoms. 
Um, this is also called proton NMR, because proton is a hydrogen atom. Um, there's also C13 NMR, which targets the carbon-13 nucleus, but typically you'll use proton NMR. So the first question is, looking at ethanol right here, um, how many different types of hydrogens do you see? Well, there's one attached to the O on the end. Um, this is an alcohol functional group. Um, there's another type of hydrogen that is attached to the CH group, and then there's another type that's in the CH3 group. And so because you only have one type of hydrogen uh, on the right side attached to the oxygen, um, this actually only has one peak. So there are three different types of hydrogen. Um, the hydrogen on the OH group, it's not coupling with the other H atoms. That means it's not interacting with these other hydrogen atoms at all. So it creates what's called a singlet. It's just a single peak. Um, however, the CH3, so here's the CH3 peaks over here, and the CH2 peaks are coupling with each other. What that means is they're actually close enough in the molecule to have an effect on the other's um, electronic environment, and so they actually split the peaks. Um, and what happens is we get a triplet here, so the CH3 gives us the triplet, and we get the quartet here as well. Um, and so again, we're not going to worry about how triplets and quartets couple each other at this point. You'll see this much more in organic, um, but overall the thing that you need to know is that NMR or nuclear magnetic uh, resonance can be used to help you determine the molecular structure of a molecule by examining um, the spectrum, so this is a spectrum, of the magnetic moments. Okay, so again, you just need to know how NMR can be used to help you determine the molecular structure.